everyone. Hope you're doing well. Um, so this is your reading lesson for Monday, April 20th. I can't believe it's almost the end of April. It's time sure is. It's gone fast, but it's gone slow too. Um, I miss you guys and hope you're doing well. Last week I kind of gave you a break from the book and we did the time capsule, capsule packlet, which was so much fun. And some of you sent in your letters and your interviews and um, your pictures and they were just so much fun for me to read. So thank you for that. This week we're gonna go back to the book. Um, I s believe I may have skipped a story. I'm not sure, I can double check here. Nope, this is a story that's um, exactly right after the sign maker's assistant. So this is called Dex, the Heart of the Hero. And I think you're gonna love the story too because it's about a dog and a cat. And it's about a bully um, and how they overcome it. So um, we're gonna start first with the vocabulary. So if you are following along with me in your book, you should be on page 162. And actually, it would be a good idea if you didn't have your book to go ahead and stop the video and get your book um, so that you can look with me. So on page 162, I have my first vocabulary, which is depended. It says the dog depended on its owner for food or water. That means you count on them. You have, you have to do something for your dog. He depends on you, otherwise he won't eat. Number two is sore. You can see the picture of the dog with his paw wrapped up. It says the dog hurt its paw. The paw is sore. It means um, it's painful. Number three is sprang. If you look at the book, we're now on page 163. There's a cat. It says the cat saw the food. She sprang towards her dish. It means she jumped. Number four, studied. Before getting a puppy, the girl studied a book about dog care. Study means you read about it and you learn about it. Number five is gazing. This dog is gazing or looking closely at a squirrel. Notice how that definition um, is right in the sentences there. Gazing means to look closely at. So what do you gaze at? Number six is hero. The dog is a hero. It saved the boy from getting hurt. A hero is someone who does something wonderful for you. Um, it could be something simple, like um, maybe somebody pushed in your chair for you, or I mean, that would be the essence of a hero, although it wouldn't make you go, oh my goodness, he's my hero. But you look, at, you look up to somebody who might do something nice for you. Number seven is exercise. A dog needs exercise every day. This dog wants to run fast. Exercise means to move and get your heart rate up, and I hope you're all doing that. And the last vocabulary word is overlooked. Look at that cute picture. It said they overlooked or didn't see where the dog was hiding. So the dog put his face in there amongst all the stuffed animals. So overlooked means you didn't see it. All right, let's go ahead and um, turn to page 166 in your book. The genre this week is a fantasy. And I'm not sure we've read any fantasies before. Um, I'm gonna have to think about that. Maybe you can think of one we read and you could share it with me. It says a fantasy is a story that could not happen in real life. This could never happen, um, but they're always fun to read about. So the author is Carolyn Buner, and the illustrator is Mark Buner, and I bet that's her husband. All right, so on the next page, page 167, um, you see a picture of Dex, and a lot of you love superheroes, uh, and that's what we have here, uh, basically a dog dressed up as a superhero. And the essential question, what makes someone a hero? Remember, you don't have to do really, really, um, big, great things to be a hero. Um, it could be just something small and it would mean a lot to somebody. So let's go ahead and turn the page. I'm gonna read the story to you. And um, tomorrow we'll talk about it a little bit more. So Dexter was a little dog. His legs were little, his tail was little, his body was little. He looked like a plump sausage sitting on four little meatballs. Being that size, being the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. 
means people didn't notice him. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up when they played chase, and after a while they forgot to invite him at all. No one really seemed to notice him, except when Clevis, the tomcat, demonstrated how he could stand right over Dex and not even ruffle his fur. So if you look at that picture, there's the cat. He looks kind of mean, doesn't he? Standing over do the dog, and the other dogs are laughing. Okay, we're on to page 170. Yes, everything about Dex was little, except for his dreams. He wanted to be a hero. He could just see it. But wanting and being are two different things. Dex lived on dreams until one day, after crawling out from under Clevis yet again, he decided there had to be more to life than gazing at the underside of a cat. There had to be more to him. If he could be a hero, he would. So Dex started training. He read every superhero comic book he could find. He watched every hero movie ever made. He went to the library. Dex figured that a hero must have strong muscles. He needed exercise and lots of it. Dex started trotting to the corner and back every morning. He hopped over every crack in the sidewalk. He struggled to climb the garbage pile, up and over and down, then up and over and down again. All day long he worked, day after day. Even at bedtime, when he wanted to flop on the rug with his tongue hanging out, Dex forced himself to circle five extra times. We're on page 173, and the box underneath, and I think I forgot to read those other boxes, but you can read them. The mighty Dex pressed on through wind and rain and storm and fatigue. Fatigue means being really tired. Page 173. When it got easier to run to the corner and back, Dex did it again and then again. Then he dragged a sock filled with sand as he ran, and then he dragged two socks. And when Cleveless was bored and stood in the middle of the sidewalk to block his way, Dex dropped to the ground and slid right underneath him. He was too busy to be bothered by Clevis. Dex was tired. He was sore. He was working so hard that he almost forgot what he was working for. But one night, as he dragged himself to bed after his last set of push-ups, Dex stopped in front of the mirror and flexed. He could feel them. He could see them. Muscles. It says, faster than a rolling ball, stronger than the toughest rawhide, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. Now, Dex didn't take the stairs, he skimmed them. He leaped over hydrants, he vaulted up curbs, he couldn't jump over the garbage mountain. I'm sorry, he could jump over the garbage mountain without touching the top. He could run like the wind, he felt as if his legs had springs. Only one thing was missing. Finally, a small brown package arrived. Dex ripped it open, his hero suit. It was red with a shiny green cape, and it fit like a glove. Dex loved the way it felt. He loved the way it looked, and he loved the feeling he had when he put it on. He was ready. And at the bottom, the box says, with the courage of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of a hero. So um, in the middle of the page there, there's a box that says analyze the text, and it talks about figurative language. And it says, what does the author mean when she says that Dex's superhero fit like a glove? So figurative language means um, using words to mean one thing when someone might think it means something else. Um, so sometimes they say, if you've ever heard your parents say, it's raining cats and dogs outside, well, you don't go out and look up and go, oh my goodness, cats and dogs are raining down in the sky. It just means it's raining a lot. So this one said his suit fit like a glove. It didn't mean his suit was a glove. Put a glove on and it fits you nice and tight and keeps the snow out. So if it fits like a glove, means it fits perfectly for him. We're on page 176 if you wanna go ahead and turn the page. And maybe you wanna use your finger or a pencil or an eraser or something to follow along. 
When Dex went out in his suit for the very first time, he looked up and down the street. He noticed a young pup trying to cross the street. Dex sprang into action. May I help you? He asked. He guided the wide-eyed pup across the street and grinned as the pup stared up at him with its mouth hanging open. The pup whispered, wow, it's Superdog. Superdog? Ooh, Dex liked the way that sounded. Of course, when Clevis the cat saw Dex, he just had to come in. Hey, Dex, where's the party? Dex was so busy that he was able to ignore Clevis for the most part. The only time his face ever got red was when Clevis yelled, Where'd you get that dress up? Dex had to wonder if Clevis saw anything but the suit. Didn't he understand that the suit was just a way to let people know he was there to help? And the box says, The sun glinted off of his emerald cape as Superdog raced to the rescue. Emerald is just um, a, the color green. Next page, page 178. There was a mouse, he saved it from a sewer. A purse snatcher, he tackled. He fixed the neighbor's sprinkler. He found a lost kitten. He pulled a rat away from a live wire. He tracked down a lost wallet. He put out a trash fire and organized a neighborhood cleanup day. It seemed that now, whenever anyone needed help, they turned to Dex and Dex had never been happier. Page 180. Late one evening, there was a banging at the door. When Dex answered, it seemed as if the whole neighborhood was yipping and yowling in a panic. It's Clevis, they shouted. He's stuck in a tree. Hurry, Dex, hurry. Dex raised his eyebrows. It was not like Clevis to move enough to get into any trouble. In a flash, he was dressed and ready. It was clearly a desperate situation. As he got closer, Dex could see Clevis. He had been chasing a squirrel to the top of the tree, but had slipped and was hanging by one claw from a slender branch. He was yowling for all he was worth. I'm slipping, Clevis screeched, help me. Dex looked desperately around for something to climb on. There were no boxes or ladders, not even any trash cans. Then Dex looked at the crowd. Quick, everybody, Dex shouted. I've got an idea. Dex leaped onto the end of the teeter-totter, facing the tree, pushing it to the ground. Everybody on the other end. One, two, three. All the animals jumped together on the other end of the teeter-totter, catapulting Dex into the air. He soared over the crowd, his ears, ears and capes streaming out behind him. And on page 183, the box says, the mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. The next page, page 184, shows you a picture of what happened. And then 185, Dex scrambled onto the branch next to Clevis. Quickly, he pulled off his cape and tied its four corners onto the screeching cat. Jump, Dex shouted, jump, Clevis. With an ear piercing shriek, Clevis let go. The billowing cape caught the air and parachuted the big cat to the ground. Dex backed up and slid to the ground amidst the cheers of the crowd. Dex was bruised and tired, but he forgot his discomfort as Clevis sheepishly lumbered over, still tangled in the green cape. Thanks, Dex. You really are a hero. Page 188. Dex didn't think he could feel any better, but he did, just a little. The next day when Clevis sidled up next to him and whispered, say, Dex, could I be your partner? Dex looked the big tomcat up and down. Mm, it would take a lot of work to turn Clevis into a hero. He could hardly wait. Sure, said Dex with a grin, sure. So at the bottom, analyze the text that says compare and contrast. And usually we use a Venn diagram for that, and we will later in the week. But it says, how has Clevis changed by the end of the story? So remember Clevis at the beginning? He was that big old bully tomcat making fun. Then something happened. Okay, so 
I put in your packet for this week. Um, you have two vocabulary pages. Choose one of them for today. Do the definition, the sentence, and draw a picture. Just one for today, okay? You are also today um, going to do the first page of spelling. I wanna say it's page 63. We're looking at the words, um, your spelling words have O-R and O-R-E that say or. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read the words. They may not be in the same order as you have. Horn, story, fork, score, store, corn, morning, shore, short, born, tour, and forget. So all of those words have either O-R or O-R-E. I want you to notice the spelling pattern and see if you can tell when do we use O-R and when do you use O-R-E. You'll notice something. Do you notice that most of the time O-R is in the middle of the word? And if you hear that OR sound at the end of the word, like shore, you're gonna have O-R-E because we need that E at the end. So take a look at those. Um, so vocabulary today and one spelling sheet today. If you need to hear the story over again, you can just watch this video again. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll talk tomorrow um, a little bit more about the story and I hope you have a great day. Bye, I miss you.